dinosaurs who had survived the freezing cold of winter, the dinosaurs surviving the barren scapes of the desert. What will happen to these peaceful herbivores, sly food-hungry raptors, and titans roaming these lands when they finally meet? It is a pair that will likely never meet until the day where I'll be combining the dinosaurs of a snow and desert ecosystem in Jurassic World Evolution 2, and even a crater arena and some other deadly challenges on its way. But first, we are in the wake of a pretty zoo plaza where I established a much needed response facility that will provide our arsenal to handle the upcoming dinosaur battles. He may or may not be carnivore food later on. Speaking of dinosaurs, let's cut straight into our first ecosystem. Fences. With a large fence habitat, I took to terraining what I already have planned in mind, slowly lifting smooth, small humps in the land that will soon merge into an adorable range. Okay, it looks omega gross right now, but after a while, putting an opening to the mounds and stretching it down, I added a crested water lake that I sanded down immediately to reveal a haven to the scorching sand dunes of a desert. A landscape coming to life after a few lousy layers of dirt, rocks, and other textures to give a grainy gradient and depth. Why am I talking like Picasso? In prehistoric desert, rare bodies of water like this become massive gathering points for survival, and especially to those looking for more than a drink. Basically a public pool for dinosaurs. With the rocks all in place, the spring also spots a lush vegetation around its waterline. Across the sand dunes, just a place where minerals rest and cactuses post. Cue the tumbleweed. With promise for food, I made a little rocky gulf that will offer the richest of richest foods. Mr. Goatman. With the center of the desert established, I expanded the surroundings to give more of a gradient from the more vegetable parts of the deserts down to the stretch after the dunes. With all of that done, I welcome you to the jewel of the desert. Straight into the new habitat, we are introducing our first dinosaurs. A pack of Gallimimus, known for its speed and whoa, some pretty jack ties. They might be seen around open arid areas. Ouch, curious little fellas. That pretty quickly tracked over the dunes. A trait that I think our new countrysaurus don't have. Slow, but these little spike balls are very adaptable. Talk about an unpleasing armpit, huh? And off into enjoying the spring they go. With new life, the jewel of the desert is now flourishing. And the land is plenty enough for the dinos. Well, for now, because at nightfall, we'll be introducing our first carnivores. But first, you guys have to know how this challenge will be going down. I'll be building two beautiful massive habitats of a desert and a snow ecosystem, which you will see very soon, and slowly releasing dinosaurs that are made for these environments, seeing how they interact within their own harsh landscapes up until the combining, where I'll merge the desert and snow environments, put all the food in the middle, and watch very unfamiliar dinosaurs meet one another for 3 whole hours. Oh and that won't be pretty, especially with the other mystery events we have stored for our plan like Guardians and the Flight. Only then will the crater commence, a final arena where the last surviving dinosaurs of each climate will be moved and battle until one is left, and we have many interesting fighters coming throughout the video to crown our final champion. But to start it all off, the first carnivores of our desert. Wait, you're not it. Well, I figured the common vegetation, there must be some little herbivore dwellers rummaging around, so yeah, there's these guys. But as dusk fell, we welcomed the terrifying... Sukamimus, semi-aquatic and big predators to desert waters. Let's see if these theropods will explore its diet outside of fish. And the others seem to fear their presence. I mean, who wouldn't? Just hear their bellows. Mom picked me up. But despite its looks, the Sukumimus pair were pretty tame and happy enough within their own space. That will soon change though because we have a few Velociraptors entering the field. Fast and versatile predators, tracking the sand dunes for prey but pretty quickly instead challenging the bigger predators first to try and take down any competition. Rookie mistake, two dead. From now on, the other Velociraptors must be more cautious with picking their opponents. And remember, we have plenty of more fighters later on in the video, as evidently our little raptors are now laying low and feeding on the smaller herbivores they can get a hold of. Real bullies. But hold on, what's that? Winter was harsh in the Dino Age, with long dark winters lasting for months and no Santa. I made a hill slide sloping down into the unforgiving terrains of the snow, shaping off the structure of a woodland with mountains and hillocks before a generous coating of dirt. It's just a base, guys, I swear. Then using grass to find the areas I'd like to have trees, layering a mixture of snow will finalize the icy winter look. Following a sprinkle of coniferous winter trees and painted more detailed textures, I figured a stony ice cap had melted into a river across the landscape. In our much hotter habitat, the Velociraptors had learned to be nimble, feeding closely together against the herbivores and using their energy for attacking our Sukumimus when they're not expecting. Hurting them, but running away for later. But not enough yet. Another casualty. But please don't take that away from me peacefully rocking up our snowy environment. Ah, uh, so calm. Not a worry in the world. Well, um, the first grazers of our snow habitat will be introduced. The Stegosaurus. While it's not commonly associated with snowy environments, their adaptability, thick skin, and grumpy face bags could make it a candidate for such conditions. Ooh, I like this bright little one. I'll name you Cheeto. Anyways, they got accustomed to the area pretty quickly, drinking from the river and foraging our winter woodlands. <music> 
Excited to eat its dry bushes, the Crichton sources will also be the first to explore the snow. Oh my god, they're battle ready. What kind of monster are you? But that's not all coming into the winter woodlands. The large and graceful giants, Brachiosaurus, will also walk our beautiful snowscape. But as they enter, let me introduce you to a third ecosystem. Starting with a fresh flat land, then the diddly fluctuations across the landscape until I get a nice smooth ridge that I watered down with a bunch of pond splotches. And now let's see if you can tell me what environment I'll be building. The marsh, a swamp land that will become an extra challenge to our combined ecosystem later on. And as little dry sources quickly took shelter to the wet undergrowth, a more terrifying friend of ours will also be joining the marsh. Dimetrodons. Like who even came up with this? What in the? But as uglyly captivating these swamp Doritos are, the diverse bacteria of the marsh manifest into our other residents. Our Parasaurolopus, dressed with a cute coat of bioluminescence. They are quite a marvel at the night of the marsh, but all fading out into the morning. Talk about not being a morning person, am I right? But with these bright colors, it will only attract hunters we will introduce very soon. But first, in the jewel, our naughty velociraptors have been more confident in taking down bigger prey. And our Demetrodons, um, they're just swimming around. I'm starting to like these guys. Wait a minute. I think it's time to introduce our first carnivore in the winter woodlands. Straight from the movies, we have the Pyro Raptor, feathered and cunning raptors, and excellent navigators of snowy bushes. Will they try to break the peacefulness of this habitat? Look how teeny they look. Actually, speaking of teeny, what will these little Moros and Trepidus do? Not really looking the part, they actually translate to the Harbinger of Doom, which, um. Yeah, about that. Let's see how these little guys survive in the cold, where the scarce frost has built up tension between our new raptors. With another herbivore taking off to grace the winter woodlands. Oh my god, they in love. Some of our older ones have put some rowdy power raptors in place. This guy, this cutie patootie killed that raptor. No, oh, so much for family. In fact, even after successfully hunting down a large meal for the pack an hour later. Come on, they're really, really embarrassing me. How did this happen now? I guess it's time to release the meaner tundra dinosaurs, huh? But wait, the desert had long been terrorized by our velociraptors and some meaner competition is due. Bro, okay, why are you vibrating? Anyways, first a pack from the Ceratopsia family, the tough Cynoceratops. And before the large carnivores, unfortunately for the jewel, the mean, deadly. Oviraptors, the chicken of the desert. Or literally just the chicken, actually. And smelling the 11 herbs and spices of our fried chicken oviraptors are... The Megalosaurus. But the only thing mega is how mega ugly their buzz cuts are. And they used to look like this. Actually, these guys come from lusher tropical climates, but some have been expected to adapt to drier areas with palm trees, so they'll fit right in. But the trees and water that of course have not disturbed by their own species, competing for food as it's going to be harder and harder, especially with our other rivals. The Carnotaurus, a fan favorite and very clever theropods. There was a quick panic for food and our herbivores became the first targets. But not so easy ones, with some being able to hold its grounds. And very quickly, the Carnos took offense to the presence of our Megalosaurus and a pack war ensues. Wounded. The Mega had no choice for this fight. Our Sukumimas are just chilling by the way. They're so cool. And smart enough to stray away from fights, but being too close to the middle only means danger. Our first victim. Oh, and how could I forget to introduce you? This is Bandit, a black Carnotaurus and proving to be the leader of the pack. His intimidating complexion and lack of fear is enough to overpower its foes, hunting flawlessly deeper into the sand dunes and putting the Carnos at a great advantage. We'll see more of him. A new dawn into the desert duel is commencing. Uh oh, what's that sound? To our winter woodlands, our first titans, a pair of Giganotosaurus, a presence that puts complete silence to the snowscape. Alongside other packs of carnivores like the Cryolophosaurus, who challenge the Pyroraptors with ease, a striking yellow green skin belongs to our more composed and well calculated Haslo, seemingly the more mature one out of the two, whereas Toro, mudded with black splotches and a bright blue snout, a bundle of confidence and recklessness, challenging anything on its way, and becoming a nuisance to the sauropods of the snow biome. With that, Haslo is the first to successfully hunt a well rounded meal for both of them, a meaty stegosaur. My gosh, they're aggression. Let's keep count. With our first titans in, the desert is going to have a hard time with the combined inhabitants. Well, by the looks of it, they're having a hard time on their own. Our last Sukumimus used up all its energy defending the precious water that feeds him with fishes, with a cost, leaving him completely wounded and no partner to help. But for the jewel, its first sauropods will take to the shrub line and graze the tough vegetation while the carnivores fight for territory. Oh no, Bandit wanted a piece of the lake for himself. One bite. But Bandit was just too fast. In a fit of bloodlust, Bandit attacked the newly sauropods. And to the jewel of the desert, I guess now we know who's running the place. Well, that before the coming of the desert's first titan. This one I'm really excited for. 
Welcome back, Liz. Now all glammed up in yellow and pink, this Spinosaurus is a second generation to one of my previous video. Let's keep count of her kills. Often associated with riverbanks and arid settings, we will see a more active Liz in this warmer environment. And quickly, some challengers. Nothing yet. And even Bandit wanted to test the strength of this new opponent. Strikes going back and forth, but Bandit was left more injured. For the first time, our Black Carno has tasted defeat. But will Liz be able to keep up the list of enemies she's been making in this deadly desert? Well, on the other side, Toro is having fun picking off any unlucky raptors that took to the snowfields, feeding and just making the snow plains his little playground. Wait, how are our other raptors doing? You guys are so stupid. Some more fitting fighters will be introduced very soon. But hold on, you have not forgotten about the marsh, have you? Ooh. <clears throat> yeah, so far quite peaceful. The Metrodons kept close with one another like old ladies morning walking, and our herbivores casually marching the swamps for kelp and food. But not for long with our upcoming flurry of new dinosaurs. The Dinochirus. Feathery giant fluffy ducks out to steal all the swamp plants from your hands. I know they look like an easy meal, but you'll be surprised what these ducks can do. But as nighttime fell on the marsh, our scariest and potentially deadliest titan just can't wait to go out. Scorpius Rex, terrifying matte black, and spines across its jagged body. His body has a weapon we will soon see that every dino should fear, and it took no time taking down its first prey. In the break of night, Bandit blends with the sky and hunted. With a full stomach, he wanted another fight. You still don't got it, mister. And the morning was too close for him to heal, and Liz found him first. With the leader down, the Carno's family is falling apart. Back at the marsh, a pack of Dilophosaurus smelt a fresh carcass from last night, and prowled to the swamps where a selection of dino corpses are left behind by our new Scorpius friend. Sneaky little guy. You're kinda ugly in the morning, actually. Hey buddy, what are you doing? Come on, you're better than that. Nope. Okay, never mind. Underneath all the wet shrublands, bad blood is brewing between our two marsh carnivores, a very naughty new intruder. And finally, we get to see the Scorpius Rex's true weapon. He stalks his prey and strikes them with a club of sharp spines. Afterwards, he simply just lets them go. Unfortunately for our prey, what they thought was a clean escape was a perfectly calculated attack of panic and poison. It frantics and suddenly extremely thirsty. As the poison deepens, muscle tire out and all the duck can do is rest, close its eyes, and accept the toxins taking over his body until... death. Our other habitat seem to be increasingly tense. And remember in a little bit we are going to be releasing all the remaining snow and desert dinosaurs at once before the combining. But first, can they survive the skies? Coming up we'll have giant sky pterosaurs roam and hunt above all our habitats. But first, they're home. After fixing up a rocky highland hugged over by a kind lake. Another perch that offers a little goatee. I'm so sorry. And it continued sprinkling short highland bushes, all the cool white rocks, and of course the rest of the trees that brings out the windswept forest look. And I called it done. A temporary home for our gentle giants. The Quetzalcoatlus, the largest flying animal to ever streak the skies. With a wingspan of 11 to 12 meters, that's like a school bus in the air. And soon I will release them out to soar and hunt our ecosystems. On top of that, soon the releasing of three extra titans, each to represent our three ecosystems during the combining. And speaking of... We are coming up for the combining. During this time, all three ecosystems will merge, all the food put in the middle, and I'll let time run for three hours and see how these dinosaurs survive such unfamiliar counterparts. The middle ground, a rugged terrain, graveled down to dirt and stone with the snow and sand of our ecosystems blowing into the battlefield. The marsh lakes leaking through into the landscape too. With this straight finished and all the food put in the middle, our dinosaurs will now meet, alongside some of our strongest titans next. But first, the releasing of all remaining dinosaurs of each habitat. Bear with me. Spiky headbutt dinosaur, his much uglier cousin, dear Lord. A second generation of stronger, cooler velociraptors, the feared atrociraptors, like ghosts in a sandy gust, and nimble with its moves. He should be a boxer. With the new raptors fighting each other, tackling for power and food, from those who had succeeded hunting down the herbivores, and those completely failing to take down Liz's everlasting reign. Ouch. 
Instead, the Winter Woodlands are getting a sheer tank of an Ankylosaurus to defend its grounds, as well as a new fluffy terror, the Eutyrannus, flaunting a coat of brown feathers, devilish horns, and hungry sharp teeth. Oh man, not the chickens. Anyways, the desert is a graveyard, and we have Liz to tank for most of them. Make that one more. As fighting strings along in the desert and more are being hunted, Haslo is sensing the presence of new dinosaurs. Oh hi Cheeto, and one of them is coming on right now. Oh my gosh, you're adorable. So round. Mm -hmm, you're my little- Oh wait, a challenge. No one's taking a chance yet. With no success taking down any big Brachiosaurus, Haslo attacked and fed on easier catches, while the Eutyrannus took to the tinier balls of green meat. The winter is definitely much less chaotic, but that will soon change. The Combining. After carnivore wars fought and won, and attempts at defending any freshly caught food, all what's left to do is put the walls down of our three ecosystems and offer all the fresh food in the middle. Of course, with this opportunity, three of our strongest combining titans is going to be entering with them. Representing the desert, it needs no introduction. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, or Tommy, a tough, thick skin that can handle any weather. But can it handle the bite of the snow's evil candidate? The Indominus Rex, with the adaptability of hundreds of animals. Welcome, Marcy. And finally, for our marsh... Warp, the terrifying Terezinosaurus, enters the battlefield. I think it should be entering a manicure instead, but instantly, our Scorpius, charging to explore the new terrain, is threatened by Warp. An overwhelming strike. He stumbles, but managed to put out a desperate poisonous whip. Will our Terezinosaurus survive this? While we wait, as tension grows between our titans, Marcy couldn't handle the desert and can be seen slowly chipped and injured by what's left of our Carnotaurus. Toro and Hazlo, still deep in the snow, are still fighting their own battles. Then a big battle begins. Liz, proving to be the killer of any competition so far, and Tommy, a new feral T-Rex. A clash, and with the T-Rex wounded, this fight will continue another day. Our titans really are the strongest in this challenge. There's no chance these guys would have... While the Indominus Rex, wounded from the desert, had been killed by a little stegosaurus. Are you secretly a monster inside? Wait, where did our flying reptiles go? The flight. Two of our giant Quetzalcoatlus will now roam the skies for the remainder of the combining, perching up over our titans and calculating their next move. But first, with hours into this, our Scorpius Rex had monopolized the meat machine and finished off the poisoned and weak warp. Remember, in a few hours, the final arena will commence with more surprises there too. Anyways, even challenging Haslo when he came too close to their food. He wasn't an easier target, and roughed up from the fight, he retreated. Despite that loss, he did leave a little poisonous present behind. Come on, Haslo, you got this. But again, the bites of a Giganotosaurus is fatal, and in a last attempt to cure his wounds, an Ankylosaurus just had a lucky advantage. While others feed on their own elements, lowering dinosaur numbers. Hi again, Cheeto. Others seem to be only interested in asserting dominance over one another, and Liz still feared amongst the crowd. Tommy and Toro had gone into the snow to weed out hiding carnivores. For our monitoring helicopter, they couldn't get far in the now dangerous skies. Really guys, it was not a great idea for our little herbivores to roam out in the open. Haslo now just fully healed, caught the attention of Liz. Another clash, but unable to stand its ground, our eldest Giganotosaurus is wounded once again. The final battle crater is coming up, and with the peaceful corners of our harmonious ecosystems come the violence of nature throughout all of the combining. The titans took to their last meals, healing as they braced for the worst. Long-lasting territories broken, some of our raptors snooping across the scape, and Liz went on a rampage as time ticks down, first fighting Tommy with a blaze of charges, wounding the chunky T-Rex but got away with some scratches herself. Toro, a nut for challenges, struck her too but again is left wounded by the agile Spinosaurus, and she was persistent enough to know a target is at its final leg. Rest in peace Toro, and Haslo was mad. It was a good fight, but now Haslo without his dear brother, left too injured as the time strikes zero. It is time. I tranquilized all our important dinosaurs to be transported into the final crater arena. But before that, we have some guardians of the craters. As the past first residents of our desert, a new generation of Sukamimus to avenge, and a Cryolophosaurus pair that didn't show their true potential in the snow. As our titans are entering, so will the final titan to defend the crater's name.
the Acrocanthosaurus, and it doesn't like intruders in its home. Okay, he kind of looks like Barney, I'm sorry. But he quickly took the first blood of the crater. Tommy scoured down to the bottom of the crater, but our titans are met with the aquatic Sukumimus defending their lake. Oh yeah, we also have our Stego that killed the Indominus Rex. I swear, look into its evil eyes. And Haslow is not playing around. Oh, but we're not done yet. And as our ghostly Atrociraptors took to the fight, a beat up, meaner version of our Carnos will Joe in the battle. And this is going to be interesting. Carnage. The Carnos are the first to show that to the others, followed by Haslow, who in his final breath used up any energy left to torment his brother's killer. Desperation is needed here in our crater. Our quick Atrociraptors used more tactical bursts of pounces that proved useless on the Carnos killer. So Jelly, Tommy, out of the two strongest tanks of the Titans, had shown his strengths. And the remaining raptors finished what our T-Rex had done. The Acrocanthosaurus succumbed to its wounds. Now the whole crater is anyone's game. And unfortunately, our Giganotosaurus is also forced to fight a wounded battle. His reign is over, but now at least he can finally rest with his brother. Our herbivores, on the other hand, made it clever, walking along the waterline until the damaged carnivores come running down. Tommy. One hit. And just not quite enough. His final breath is drawn in water. Again, that won't stop our quick opportunist. Fresh meat for the pair. Oh, um, hi there. I forgot about you. He's lonely. Liz on the sidelines has killed a few challengers, and all that's left is her, a final Carno, a pair of sly atroc raptors, and one Sukumimus, able to fend off the biggest of titans so far. However, at the camouflage of night, the Carnotaurus had one prey in mind. The dawn of first light shined upon our final competitors. Who will win? She struck, but our Carno stood its grounds and bit. Scarred, Liz won across her neck too, and running away, our Spinosaurus tried chasing the Carno down, but he was fast enough. However, our fight ended unexpectedly. And with the rest of the Raptors, well... Well, that is all. The winner of the crater is Liz the Spinosaurus. I transported her back into our giant ecosystems to live the rest of her days and let the rest of both our beautiful environments flourish. Hello for the last time, Cheeto. You be good now. For the winner? Actually, you guys pick in the comments who is deserving of the champion title to our whole challenge and who won, the desert or the snow. And finally, our combined world will come to an end. Thank you so much for watching.